Artificial intelligence and quantum computing are those big buzzwords that people throw around as potential game changers for literally everything from finance to robotics and even healthcare. And on paper, computers that can be a million times smarter and faster than today's supercomputers is such an inspiring idea that it's no wonder people think of these innovations as magic ones. Yet, the number of people who actually understand the ins and outs of a quantum computer is only a handful. Recently, I have tried to tackle the subject myself, but as soon as I drifted away from the comfortable ones and zeros, well, this happened. People were trying to explain it to me, but I found myself smiling and nodding, looking at them blankly. They were speaking nonsense. They say a classical bit is zero or one, but a quantum bit is both a zero and a one. How? Do they even understand it? I couldn't tell. Maybe they've just learned that line from an article too. How can something be two things at once? I felt like falling into a rabbit's hole. I was wandering around my apartment. The coffee got cold in my hand. But was it still hot? Maybe it was both. I couldn't sleep anymore. I wanted to crack the answer. Maybe a quantum computer could do it. Maybe, just maybe, a quantum computer can figure out how it works. But recently, IBM reached out to me for a sponsored collaboration regarding AI and quantum computing, and I was happy to jump on the opportunity to talk to someone who is one of those people who can hopefully shed light on what quantum computing is and what to expect when it eventually enters healthcare. This is Dr. Bertolo Meshko, and you are watching The Medical Futurist. Today, my guest is Dr. Federic Flutter, who has an amazing job description being in quantum computing and artificial intelligence in life sciences. I am Frederik Flöter, IBM Quantum Industry Consultant and Computational Scientist for Healthcare and Life Sciences. My background is in physics. I did my PhD in the area of photonic quantum computing. And my work focuses on exploring medical applications of quantum computing and AI in collaboration with our partners in the IBM Quantum Network. His work is truly something out of a science fiction story. And as someone who has hands-on experience with these technologies, first I was curious about how he would describe quantum computing to us laymen. Quantum computing, it's a fundamentally different method of computing with novel hardware and software. Instead of the classical bits that we are familiar with, which can be zero or one, we use so-called quantum bits, qubits, and they have a range of quantum properties that we can leverage. In building on these properties, quantum algorithms allow us to tackle some problems, not all, some problems in a new way, and in certain cases, achieving exponential improvements. As someone who works on AI and quantum computing with life sciences in mind, I was really curious about what Dr. Flutter sees as the most exciting areas for application. So there's a range of areas, of course, I want to focus uh, for today on three of them, which are genomics, drug discovery, as well as precision medicine. So if we just focus on each one briefly to see the uh, kind of improvements we are seeing from AI and we're looking to drive with quantum computing in genomics, we're really working towards determining the precise effects of our genes on our health and lives. So, for example, with uh, genome-wide association studies. In drug discovery, on the other hand, we're looking to discover new small molecule drugs as well as biologics and understand how proteins fold and behave. And so consider this, so far, around 10 to the 7 organic and inorganic substances have been reported. However, there's around 10 to the 60 potentially pharmacologically active molecules, so that's the chemical space, out there. So that's a lot of orders of magnitude from 10 to the 7 to 10 to the 60, which are still waiting to be explored and which we're hoping 
to venture into with quantum computing. And third, precision medicine, so really personalizing diagnostics and treatments, understanding the earliest biomarkers and indicators of disease, and customizing treatments and proactive interventions at the individual level. Again, consider a relevant statistic here that currently only around a third of patients respond to drug-based cancer therapies, really highlighting that need to become more granular, more personalized with the treatments. Since most of us interpret quantum computing as just these mighty fast computers, I wanted to dig deeper whether it's true or are they something fundamentally different and what place these machines can occupy in our future. Quantum computers are thought to be these magic big data machines where you can just throw lots and lots of classical data in and you get a magic answer. Now, at least our current generation of quantum computers is not built for that. Um, they cannot yet efficiently load large volumes of classical data. Instead, what they're very good at is finding complex correlations, interdependencies, relationships in the data. There's another misconception around quantum computing, which is that they are set to replace all our existing classical systems. And again, that's not quite accurate. Instead, we're working to integrate them into intelligent workflows, into computational pipelines, so they can work hand in hand with classical computing, with AI, so that uh, classical computers and AI can work on what they are best at, and quantum computers can tackle those hard problems for which we have relevant quantum algorithms. So think about it really as them working hand in hand together to solve the overall challenge that we are tackling. Now, for something we deal with a lot on this channel, with all these technologies in mind, I wanted to know what vision Dr. Flatter has in mind for the future and to see how much it aligns with our own ideas, especially from a patient's perspective. What I believe we're driving towards is essentially a continuous health and well-being status where you have some sort of personalized medical app uh, which then allows you to get proactive personalized suggestions. So for example, um, you get up, you then get a suggestion for a suitable healthy breakfast. Um, you then later on in the day, you get a suggestion for some exercise, fitting your needs and your time and your personal goals. Maybe then to later on the day, towards the evening, you get a suggestion for an activity to balance your day and establish your well-being. And if there's some sort of anomaly in your health status, um, you may also then get a suggestion for pros and cons of scheduling a sort of medical checkup and, and even a therapy perhaps. And all of those uh, would be incentivized then uh, through forecasts. So what would happen most likely if you did this? What would happen if you most likely did this? Um, through gamification, we're already seeing primitive forms of that with our activity trackers and uh, counting our steps. So there would be incentives around that that you can follow a healthy lifestyle. As you might sense it, the success of AI and quantum computing in healthcare depends on the data it has access to. And the word is already ushering towards an era where we are constantly generating data about our health. Dr. Flutter has worked on a project where they have peeked into what the future holds, where machine learning can be applied to medical data. I want to give one example here, which I think is relevant actually on a project which I myself was part of, um, where we uh, really focused on that at the heart of the project. And that concerned a multi-year study that um, uh, Roche and IBM carried out together, where we uh, applied machine learning to electronic health records. And we built models that can predict the risk of uh, chronic kidney disease for diabetes patients. And when we were selecting those different kinds of machine learning models and comparing them and contrasting them, we really took into account which of those are more black boxes and which of those can we understand more easily. And so we ended up uh, picking those, focusing on those which we can understand in order to achieve that acceptance by medical practitioners you touched on. And building on those, we were then able uh, to outperform actually all existing algorithms based on uh, data from clinical studies only. And so this was a 
uh, a pioneering piece of Europe to help pave that way towards using real world data and using it in such a way that it can be accepted by humans, by politicians, by society. So the question is, with all this sensitive data on the line, what should we expect from a privacy standpoint? Is it possible to find a balance between sharing our data so we can build AI-based technologies while also keeping our privacy intact? So I believe we're driving towards a future where it's up to you how much you want to share. The more you're willing to share, the better and more personalized will be the advice, the medical advice, which you're likely to get. And I think in order to make that as seamless as possible, uh, let's look at today where we already have some privileged relationships, for example, between attorneys and clients, or even between medical practitioners and patients, where people generally feel comfortable sharing very personal data and very personal information. But I don't think this is an ethical dilemma in the sense that nowadays, if I go, if I'm sick and I go to my doctor, but I'm not willing to tell the doctor exactly my medical history and maybe exactly what is bothering me, of course, the doctor will not perhaps be able to make the most accurate diagnosis. Finally, I was curious about how Dr. Flutter sees the present of these promising technologies and how the rest of us should think about quantum computing and AI's future. So to wrap up, as humans, we tend to overestimate what can happen in the short term but underestimate what can happen in the long term. So no, quantum enhanced AI applications are not yet able to discover new drugs for you or give you personalized medical advice, but we are making very rapid progress in exploring proof of concept studies with AI and with quantum. And I'm very excited regarding the next years. So I would encourage you to check out some of the resources uh, we have linked for you here. I would encourage you to learn, learn, learn to keep up with these rapid developments and perhaps even start contributing if you're interested. So the question I'd like to leave you with is, are you ready for the quantum and AI powered future of medicine? I know I am. See you next time. If you like this video, please subscribe below and don't forget to tap the notification bell too, so you will get notified about all new videos. Thank you.